Everybody thinks it's gold rising, but actually it's fiat currencies declining. Um, and I'm trying to ram that message home because the people who will protect themselves from um, the multiple crises that are now in view, um, they're the people who actually understand that it's the paper currencies going down, not gold rising. And it's really for that reason that, you know, when people ask me, you know, what's your target for gold or silver? I don't give one. I mean, I've, you know, as a long standing stockbroker, um, I know that every forecast you make is, um, you know, is, is just something that you pluck out of, out of thin air. No point in doing it. Silly game. So I don't do that. But also, um, you know, the question should be phrased. How far do you see the dollar going down? or euro going down, or whatever your favorite currency is. Um, and the answer to that, I'm afraid, is I think they're all on their way to zero. The question is, how long will it take to get there? <laughs> that depends, I think, on um, how events unfold. I mean, we've got um, a potential war um, in the Ukraine and also in the Middle East, um, which could end up with um, being nuclear, um, I mean, obviously we, you know, it's goodbye everybody if we if if, if we go down that route. But um, there is also the fact that the U.S. dollar is in a debt trap, um, and there seems to be absolutely no recognition in the political class of the importance of that um, position. And um, they're still spending like billio. Um, you know, the excuse is and it's election year and. <laughs> You know, we've got to get re-elected. Um, and on top of that, I mean, we've drifted into socialism in Europe um, with France and now the UK. Um, that's going to um, uh, bring on um, uh, financial disasters for both the, the euro and also sterling. And you can see that the Bank of Japan is suppressing interest rates um, at the zero bound. Um, they still zero. They're determined not to raise them, um, and um, at some stage, they're going to have to do it. But I think the biggest problem, which everybody is getting wrong, and I mean virtually everybody, is the outlook on interest rates. They think that interest rates are going to fall. They're not. I mean, they might come down a touch um, because central banks actually don't understand the role of interest rates, and also they're under huge pressure from markets to um, reduce interest rates. Also, they're under pressure to, um, uh, if you like, alleviate uh, the problems in the banking system, um, which undoubtedly are exacerbated by current interest rates. I mean, look at the commercial real estate situation in America, for example. Um, you've got zombie companies um, who cannot afford um, interest rates at this level, and they're gradually having to refinance themselves from the lower rates to which they became used. Um, these are all disasters uh, uh, coming up. And um, I don't know which one's going to hit the fan first. I mean, you know, nobody does. But it's all there. It is all there. And that will give you your timing. New currency being back 40% by gold and so on. But the, so how it will actually pan out, we will see. Um, I think that that paper was merely a sort of form of introduction it sort of get the get the thing get the debate going and as a result of the debate uh, something will be put on the agenda um uh, in october which is the next um major uh, BRICS summit uh, there are two things going on here i mean there's obviously BRICS, um and um the other thing is the shanghai cooperation organization now, um, you're talking about Korea. Um, that is not a member of the SCO, um, but there's no doubt about it <clears throat> that um, anything that happens in the SCO uh, will also involve North Korea. On top of that, Putin also visited Vietnam. Um, and um, uh, the point about SCO is that they have now agreed to um, work towards a defense agreement whereby all members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization um, agree, if you like, to 
as you know to be military allies i'm not going to put it more strong you know more strongly than that because this is something which is in formation i think the point about it is that the intelligence services in the west will be alerted very clearly to what's going on and this is desperately important when nato is trying to expand itself into um ukraine i mean okay it's sort of in semi denial but there's no doubt about it that um you know ukraine's gone wrong for nato and there's a problem that the whole thing could well get escalated so it makes sense for uh, uh putin to uh, say well you know if things are going to escalate and you're going to lose patience over ukraine then bear in mind it's not just russia you'll be fighting there's the whole of asia uh, and i think that was the message that he was trying to get over and that was why he went to korea north korea and also vietnam and also the meeting with the sco which was only last week where this agenda was agreed